Okay, if you want to share your radio or want to join a group of people that are sharing radios, it's important that your shared radios have a name that is recognizable by other users, usually with uh, the name of the radio and the kind of radio it is and your call sign. For example, a uh, W6FCC 7300 uh, 10 through 40. That might be a good name for the radio. And on the access to someone else's machine, you're going to want to name your ICOM remote with your call sign and name so that when you connect to another user's server, your client will display who you are so that they know whether or not you're a legit user or whether or not you're operating out of band in case you're connected to someone in a foreign country or they're connected to your radio. So step one, we need to name your your radios and name your ICOM remote. And you'll see how to do that in the next few images. Now let's assume that you've installed RSBA1 and there's a whole set of videos on how to do that. The first time you run the ICOM remote and the only time the first time that you run it, the first question is going to be set your own PC information. And what that means is to give your PC a name. Now this is a misnomer. You're not actually naming your PC. You're naming your ICOM remote so that when you connect to another station, they're going to see this name. Now this name shown here, desktop 9K whatever, that's not a descriptive name. And also you'll notice that the internet access line is a fiber to the home. We probably want to change that. So what I did is I named mine W6FCC Win 10. Uh, probably should have put W6FCC Jeff, but I was playing with a, a VMware machine. And I changed mine to ADSL a cable TV. Now when you register, you're not actually registering with ICOM, you're registering to the system registry. And when you do that, the in the registry there's going to be a section under software that has ICOM and it'll have the ICOM remote and the PC RSBA1 program. You don't have to worry about that, but that's where it goes. So you then say okay, at this point you have to restart ICOM remote. When you do, for the very first time, it's going to say, do you want to use this setup wizard? I don't think you need to use it. It's a little confusing about what it is they mean. So just X that out and keep on moving through the uh, the first server that you want to connect. Just in case you want to know where it is storing the information, it is in the registry, but you don't want to mess around in here. But here's where the name of your radio and here's the ADSL connection. So you, you now have got your settings correct and you've named it correctly. Uh, the first thing you want to do is start to create a server. Now my ICOM remote has several radios and several servers. So we'll go over here to the server list and I have a few servers that I can connect to. I'm connected right now to G0 SCI and I'm connected to Geordi. I'm connected to a couple of them. So you're going to you're going to say add a server. And when you do, you have to enter the server address or network name. If you are on a LAN, you can go ahead and put in your local LAN address for your ICOM server that you've set up. You remember, you're on a client now. Uh, or if you have an internet connection and you're using uh, port forwarding and what have you, you can enter the IP address of your server. Or if you're really smart, you'll have gotten a dynamic DNS name, so you can actually put in a name here and not just a number. So I have made up a dynamic DNS name called myserver w6fcc.com. That doesn't exist, but I'm just using it for demonstration purposes. When you do that, <clears throat> it's going to ask you for your username and password. Make sure that on the server you've already set username and password because when you try to connect, if, if you're not a legitimate user, it'll fail. After you've connected and then you go over to the radio list, you're going to see the radio list uh, of radios that are in, currently in use. Uh, in this case, uh, G0 SCI has a 7610. That's currently busy with uh, Rich, and uh, Rich is also. But this is the advantage of naming the ICOM remote to the name of your call sign and maybe where it's located or what your name is. This way, uh, G0 SCI knows that it's Rich, and uh, anyone using the K9 NZF radio, that's, this one is in uh, Birmingham, England, or Southampton, England. This one is in... Uh, in Iowa, in uh, Illinois, no, Indiana, sorry, Indiana, and uh, we're all able to use these radios. So if you want to share your radio with other users, you do want to name your shared radios with names that make sense, and you want to name your own ICOM remote so that other people will know who you are, and that's pretty much what you need to know.